warming up. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the animated films that took more than a little inspiration from far more popular ones. I thought you were my friend, but you're nothing but a troll and a liar. <laughs> Number 20, Spider's Web, A Pig's Tale. Charlotte's Web is a beloved tale with lovable characters and heartbreaking lessons that create a mature yet accessible tale that people of any age could enjoy. One corporation took that and completely flattened it by creating a film about a dishonest pig and his sassy spider companions. What a great imagination, Tiffany. The animals lack the natural charm of those in the original and everything from the way they look to the way they sound falls flat. They somehow took a genuinely endearing narrative and morphed it into something truly bizarre. Pigs don't fly from big blue sky. Fishy, fishy, fishy's in the bright blue sky. While it does have its unintentionally funny moments and a decent lesson about telling the truth, it lacks any of the wholesome energy of the source material. Thanks. I want to rest now. You guys finish sightseeing, then we'll all go back to the barnyard. Number 19, Caroline and the Magic Potion. Some properties shouldn't be touched by knockoff creators, and Coraline is one of them. Caroline! Help! Its dark, sinister vibe and breathtaking visuals made it a unique experience. You think that would be too high of a bar to try and clear, but that didn't stop the creators of Caroline and the Magic Potion from trying. In this interpretation, young Caroline uses the potion to save her grandmother from bad guys. You poor thing. Don't worry, Grandma. When we get back to the bus, I'll make you a tasty meal. They simply can't capture the same energy as their inspiration. The style is undoubtedly interesting, but can't hold up to the source material. When looking at this compared to Neil Gaiman's ominous and whimsical creation, the two aren't even close to being on the same level. You don't need a glider or wings to fly. Number 18, Life's a Jungle, Africa's Most Wanted. Considering how many animated motion pictures are set in Africa, you'd think that studios would be able to create a near-perfect copy of the landscape. Unfortunately, not everyone can get it right, leading to things that look like life's a jungle Africa's most wanted. Out here, a cat can put you in the doghouse. It tries to emulate Madagascar, but is missing a few key components, such as the gorgeous setting and the camaraderie between friends. The hero, a spoiled British pup, is hard to root for, even when he is showing off his kung fu moves. The rest of the animals are one note as well and lack any real depth. Between the confusing storyline and shots that seem to last forever, everything about this project misses the mark. All joking aside, they are all my good friends. And if they can't stay, then I can't stay. Number 17, Leo the Lion, King of the Jungle. It's rare to describe a movie as perfect, but The Lion King comes close. Everything from the music to the character design and story development was pulled off perfectly. After it met with resounding success, another company decided to try their hand at replicating it. The result is a slapdash copy with a few small differences. Someday, I'll be just like you. Look, don't try to be like me. Just be the best you you can be. The biggest misstep is the music. In the original, the songs not only help move the narrative along, they also enriched it. In this rendition, they only serve as exposition and don't add anything meaningful to the scenes. I lost my home. Oh mama, I wish you were here. Overall, it's a poor attempt at capitalizing off a fantastic piece of art, and it quickly fell to the wayside as the Disney property continued to skyrocket in popularity. Someday, he would be the jungle king. Number 16, Kiddo the Super Truck. On paper, a film about a truck with the ability to turn into other types of vehicles doesn't seem like the worst plan. It's a simple yet effective idea, especially for a kid's movie. However, when it came time to execute the ideas, the creator struggled with fleshing out that concept. Over you. Come on While the animation is fluid, the car's faces definitely veer into the uncanny valley. The sound effects are often far more dramatic than they need to be. Although, there is something hilarious about the sound of loud truck horns and angry honking accompanying a bunch of wholesome, smiling cars. (laughs) 
While it's inoffensive, it doesn't hold a candle to the car series, either in design or story. You two can look like me. ka -chow. Number 15, Little and Big Monsters. The biggest sin a film can commit is being boring, and that's the unfortunate case for this one. The chain of events are basic. A couple of scientists accidentally create a group of monsters, and with the help of two kids, try to stop them. Oh my goodness, that can't be what I think it is. We have to tell Uncle Crumb. It's not exactly Citizen Kane, but the problem definitely doesn't end there. While they have the interesting plan to have the creature's sizes affected by food, they don't do much with it. The characters and settings seem thrown together and come across as flat despite being 3D. It lacks any real charm which the real Monsters vs. Aliens had in spades, especially from the ensemble cast. This simply can't measure up, resulting in an uninspired final product. It really works! Did you hear that? <laughs> I always knew you were a genius, Uncle Crumb! Number 14. Homework. Even flicks that didn't make a huge splash aren't safe from being ripped off. While Onward didn't see much financial success due to the pandemic, that didn't stop a studio from making their own similarly titled mockbuster, Homeward. I need more milk. It does the body good. Go get some, please. The leads being part human and part fantastical creature doesn't come across well at all, leading the protagonist to look more like weird guys rather than an orc and an elf. We're going on a road trip. No talking. Understand? Yeah. They also have problems with the brothers' relationship. While they have an interesting aim for the overarching story, they aren't able to properly execute it. Even with the lackluster reception of Onward, people could still agree that it was miles ahead of this imitation. That's so cool! Number 13. Trollland. We're not entirely convinced this isn't just an elaborate prank against its viewers. Based on both the toy and the motion picture, Trollland was a mockery of the Trolls brand. Instead of being cute and brightly colored, they all look horrifying with eyes that stare directly into the audience's soul. You were different. You were like me. You see nature. My mom taught me that. Beyond their appearance, the way they move is odd. They seem like they are being dragged along rather than moving naturally, making it seem more like a horror movie than a children's film. Even talented actors like Dick Van Dyke can't help the final product. Nothing good could come of this. While the source material may not be someone's favorite, it still has plenty of personality, something this one can't boast. Ow, Ow. that has to hurt. Number 12, Plan B. This could truly strike fear into the hearts of anyone that watches it. Smell that? Flowers in full bloom. Don't you love being a bee? After the success of the bee movie, others scrambled to release their own versions. This led to Plan B, a piece centered around a group of bugs and their attempts to feed their new queen. Everything about the insects from their movements to their voices is deeply unsettling. Even climatic moments like the intense bee battle comes across as silly. However, the most inconsistent aspect is the tone. Not so fast. While dark humor in a family-friendly picture can be nice for any grown-up watching, these jokes were too immature to have the same effect. While they did make it slightly more entertaining, it still doesn't quite cross over into so bad it's good territory. Long live the queen! Long live the queen! Number 11, Shark Bait. There's nothing wrong with making a youth-oriented picture with slightly more adult aspects, but it's still important to account for taste. I'm pretty strong for my size. Check these muscles. <laughs> Hands off the merchandise. With a plot chock full of assault, coercion, and harassment, it's clear that Sharkbait missed the mark by a mile. So much of the dialogue is uncomfortable, especially between the dangerous shark and the small fish he has his sights on. I'm gonna, you're gonna. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're gonna take a little trip ah. through my digestive ah. system. Compared to other flicks set under the sea like Finding Nemo and Shark Tale, this one is just plain dark. With a surprisingly star-studded cast consisting of big names like Evan Rachel Wood and Freddie Prince Jr., we can't help but wonder how many of them pulled the short straw and ended up in this picture. I do believe in you. Cordelia. Number 10. 
bug bites in Ant's life. Hey, Sal. Hi. Remember when people called Ant's a ripoff of Pixar's A Bug's Life? Well, after seeing this travesty, you'll find a whole new appreciation for the DreamWorks film. With 3D animation that barely looks finished, awful voice acting, and irritating sound quality, this flick goes on for too long and amounts to nothing, at least according to critics and viewers. Still worried about geckos? Nah, I met them. They're not very bright. We guess it's about a caterpillar and some ants trying to survive a gecko incursion? The plot sorta gets lost in all the chase scenes. Apparently the creators thought watching insects scuttle back and forth for half an hour counts as entertainment. I look like Bark, he can't see me. No problem. Number 9. Tappy Toes Just follow my lead! Here we get a much needed break from horrendous 3D animation and are even treated to a higher standard of voice work. But for most people, that doesn't save Tappy Toes from being another train wreck. The limits of Flash animation become clear early on, as this short happily rips off the plot of Happy Feet, minus the stellar dance sequences, oh, and the Robin Williams. What are you looking at? You looking at me? Come over here, baby. Mm -hmm. Come on, mommy. Mm -hmm. Sure, it tries to throw in some self-referential humor, but considering there's an uncomfortable scene where a hermit crab threatens to pinch a sea lion in not-so-child-friendly places, Tappy Toes manages to tap itself out. Epic fail. Number 8. What's up? Balloon to the rescue. Hey, I'm a genius! This mockbuster not only dumps on the original Pixar epic, it's also a confusing schlockfest. For some reason, the filmmakers behind What's Up didn't think a flying house was thrilling enough, so they tossed in magic. If you stick around long enough, you might find yourself asking why a magical stone so function is to turn a house into a part hot air balloon or why they go out their way to be racist towards a supporting character that happens to be Chinese. Arigato! No problem, but Arigato is Japanese. However, we'll forgive you if you don't even make it that far after seeing the questionable 3D animation. We'll be heroes only after we send those monsters back to another dimension, okay? Number 7. Kiara the Brave, aka Super K. You've given me everything. But I'm still missing excitement! Many consider this a terrible film that should have never been forced onto the viewing public. But it's also called a travesty because when it was shipped to the United States, the distributors rebranded it to cash in on the latest Pixar release, Brave. Where did they take the king? I heard them say the netherworld. Funnily enough, Kiara the Brave involves neither medieval Scotland nor a coming of age story where a strong female protagonist tries to forge her own path. What do we get instead? A superhero called Super K, trying to defend the world of Dream Zone from the evil bad mess, while Kiara stands in the background doing pretty much nothing. Ask, but as kids, we don't have the power to call on destiny, do we? Number six, the secret of Mulan. You will be Soldier Hua. <laughs> ah. Turns out that the company that made this adaptation has a long history of reworking beloved films into what's become known as the Secret Of series. Entries include The Secret Of The Hunchback, The Secret Of Anastasia, and of course, The Secret Of Mulan. So how does it fare? Well, not only has the Mulan entry been called a bastardization of one of animation's greatest female characters, it goes a step further by throwing in elements right out of a bug's life. Sorry, Flick. You and your friends have been ripped off twice on this list. Number 5. The Little Panda Fighter We don't even know where to start with this one. Kung Fu Panda created a perfect, irreverent, yet inspirational underdog scenario. And this is unfortunately just a cheap imitation. Uh, I was just practicing various martial arts techniques. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Despite the protagonist being a literal dancing panda, he doesn't have a fraction of the charisma that Jack Black's portrayal of Poe had. The bear's proportions are unnatural and their movements are stilted. And the plot is silly. Hey, here's the deal, Pangata. I do the fighting and you get all the glory. Boss, I gotta be honest, this idea is way bad. Compared with the arc that Poe experienced, the one that Pancata goes through is non-existent. The director throws everything at the wall, including a boxing scene and a twist ending, but nothing sticks. It's the ultimate proof that being inspired by a great product doesn't mean you can emulate it yourself. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> uh, you're yanking my fur again, ain't ya? Number four, the legend of Cirilla, aka La Legion de Cirilla. Stop! He'll freeze to death! This Canadian animation incurred the wrath of Disney. And that's not shocking, considering its title was changed to Frozen Land for the US market. Subtle. The shaman says the spirits are angry with the clan. The shaman should bring back the animals. Again, this is a pretty big blunder by the distributors because while the story focuses on a less than enthralling tale of an Inuit shaman and his animal friends, the name and even the signature logo were designed to match Disney's Frozen. The company behind Legend of Cirilla might have thought their film was just a blip on the radar. But in the end, the mouse house sees all. The creators should have done themselves a favor and let it go. Let it go, let it go. Number three, The Frog Prince. Why can't I find my prince charming? Based on the reviews, you can basically summarize this mockbuster in one word, lazy. Lazy because they only use a handful of locations. Lazy because the voice work involves insulting imitations of supposedly black accents. And lazy because we immediately dislike many of the characters. Well, that's it. There's nothing more I can do. While Disney's The Princess and the Frog gave us magic, great chemistry between the lead characters, and important life lessons, all we got here is a princess who throws tantrums, a king who resents his daughter's independent attitude, and a frog who will say practically anything just to score. I can. <laughs> of course I can. Number two, Ratatouille. Chef Marcel Toying prepares the most delicious and exotic dishes, always using special secret ingredients. They may trade Paris for Rio de Janeiro, but this ripoff remains just as blatant no matter where you set it. Obviously taking liberties from the five-star meal that is Pixar's Ratatouille, the plot follows a rodent-head chef who tries to keep his restaurant open and defeat his competitors. How does he do that? By stealing fresh ingredients from human kitchens in sequences that try to imitate spy capers of old, and which, at least according to most people who've watched it, failed miserably on every conceivable level. That's not exactly what I had in mind, but bring it out if it'll be delicious. Do yourself a favor and skip this meal. I'm afraid I don't find that to be particularly funny. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. A Car's Life – Sparky's Big Adventure I'll take a car wash tomorrow! That's what you said yesterday! Cars wasn't exactly the pinnacle of Pixar's creativity but it's still a decent and entertaining film, especially in comparison to this. Throughout this chopped together mess, we're subjected to protagonist slash motorized douchebag Sparky, who only exists to cause chaos wherever he goes. Along the way, we're treated to what could be described as an onslaught of terrible animation, awful voice acting, and a collection of some truly detestable automobiles. Stop playing around. It's about as cheap a mockbuster as you can get, so we'll never understand how it managed to spawn multiple sequels. I feel like an idiot. Cars see me and swerve to get out of the way. What cartoon ripoffs make you do a double take? Let us know in the comments down below. I can't live with this constant torture any longer. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.